Uh, tell me about this report. What did it show us? You've seen a lot of these kinds of reports. Was it remarkable? Yeah, I mean, actually, what's interesting is that it looks a lot like some of the other reports that we've seen coming out of the big tech companies of the Valley, the Google, Twitter, Apple, Facebook. These companies all kind of show a similar pattern, which is very few um, women and non-Asian people of color in engineering um, and sort of across the company as a whole and especially in leadership. Uber in many ways is actually quite similar to that. Um, and because they include in their total employee count some of their customer support people, they did have sort of a, a better racial diversity than some of the other companies that we've seen. But in many ways it was actually quite in line with some of the other companies that we've been getting reports on for a couple of years. And I suppose this uh, doesn't include the drivers. It does not. <laughs> that is, uh, the drivers remain independent contractors and they are therefore not included in this. Although there were plenty of people on Twitter that I was seeing tweet that, that were still a little confused about that. Right, because they don't want the drivers to be employees because they have to give them things like benefits and, and, and worker rights and Health so on. Health insurance, benefits, yeah. workers' comp, all these things that they do not want to include. It's been a long legal battle and, and the status for now is that they are still independent contractors. And that's not same the with only... Lyft, same right. with other places. Well, that's yeah. not the only uh, uh, diversity issue with Uber. Right? We had this former employee come out and say that uh, she was discriminated against because of her gender uh, while working at Uber and detailed a lot of the problems there. Yeah, and I, that's actually the jumping off point for a different story that I wrote this afternoon. It talks about the um, way that these tech companies diversity reports do not include retention rates. So, you know, they're happy to talk about, you know, a demographic snapshot of what the company looks like as well as their hiring rates, but they don't really talk about who stays. And, you know, when you talk to people who really study management and diversity, they say that retention rates and, and who exits and really whether you might see some demographic groups at a company leaving more frequently than others is actually a pretty good indicator of what the culture is like inside the company, how inclusive it is. And it's a very important metric, just people really don't like to talk about it. It's quite sensitive. Well, and the, but the, 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 yeah. well, the, the, the Susan the, Fowler essay is interesting because she talks about how she tried to track the retention yeah. rates of her own department uh, herself, you know, because she knew the company wouldn't talk about it. And she was interested in seeing really who's leaving this particular engineering department. And she even says in her essay that the reasons people left or the reasons women were leaving was because it was organizationally very chaotic and that there was also a lot of sexism. Well, it's, it's also interesting, too, because she also suggested that in a perverse way, a diversity initiative at Uber caused her to not to be forced out of the company. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. What she says in her essay is that she applied for transfer within teams and that it was blocked and that she didn't really get good answers from HR on why that happened um, and that she says she found out later and you know, she overheard her manager boasting about how he was able to keep women on his team, this was an engineering team, how he was able to keep them on even when other managers were losing them and that, you know, I, we don't know that it was an official policy within Uber that managers were being, you know, uh, graded on their retention rates, but it seemed to me to make it pretty clear that at least within the company, people are paying attention to who is able to keep yeah. women in engineering, who is able to keep certain demographic groups within their teams. And also, I think it's important for Uber, probably they track you know, who stays at the company as a whole. And of course, well, Susan and Fowler it, left in December. So. And it almost suggests, maybe, and they won't tell us, so we can't give them credit for it, that they were maybe at some level trying to do the right thing or trying to be more diverse, I should say. And yet, the, the way they did it uh, ended up uh, handcuffing them and trying to get the result they were after. Yeah, I mean, I think every company is paying attention to this. Um, I, th you know, the sense I get is that they do it in part because they know it's something that outsiders are, you know, that they're under a lot of public scrutiny for, and also because I think there are people within the company that believe it's good for the company, it's good for the business. But it, it's this mix of the two where I think companies are, are definitely aware that it's something that they're being watched, right. um, watched for, and and are trying to find their way to, uh, you know, a place that that where they find policies that work for them and and yeah. you know where they can sort of make progress.